I also got a curry with tendon. Oh, that looks fantastic. Okay, I'll get a little bit of everything in this bite. Good morning, everyone. It's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in Hong Kong. Ying and I didn't have the best sleep last night. We woke up at about 2.30 a.m. and have been awake since. But that's not because the bed isn't comfortable. The bed is ridiculously comfortable. It's like a cloud, but just due to the traveling and the jet lag. But the good news is, it is a fresh day in Hong Kong. We're gonna go have breakfast right now. Oh, that's the other thing. We woke up hungry too. So we've been waiting for breakfast and right now it's 6 a.m. They have a real mix of food from all the different cured meats and salmons to jamon, <laughs> more ham, and then also some Chinese things as well. This is ham like being back in Spain. And then we got ham, some salmon, I got some nuts, um, some Chinese food, and this is what I need to try first, is the shumai. Huge pieces of shrimp in there. And then also some braised eggplant, I think. Mm. That is really creamy. This is Europe and China on a single plate. And then we got some dill salmon. I think I've had my share of salmon on this trip so far and I don't regret any bite of it. This is a different type of salmon here. This is so good though, I'm gonna have to go back for more of these. Mm. It's packed with shrimp. Breakfast was a wonderful success and I like how they also have coffee you can take to go. So I wasn't gonna miss the opportunity. Right after breakfast, I was thinking of going up to Victoria Peak. At least that's what I was thinking about doing this morning. But it is rainy, it's cloudy, there's zero visibility, so I guess that's not gonna happen this morning. weather has not let up, it is still raining, so we are jumping on the subway, we're heading up a couple stations, and on our way to go eat. Okay, looks like it's just gonna drizzle all day long. House. This is one of the classic dim sum restaurants in Hong Kong and what I love so much about this place is you're just walking along the street in Hong Kong and then you come up the flight of stairs no matter what time of day you come here or no matter if it's raining or shining there could be like horrible weather outside and this place will still be packed. So you just walk in here, you find empty tables, you share tables with wherever you can find empty seats. And for ordering here, they push the dim sum around on carts and every now and then they will bring out a fresh cart full of steamed dim sum and you do have to kind of be aggressive. So right now I'm waiting for a fresh cart of dim sum to arrive and I'm gonna pounce upon it and then they mark down all that you order on this check sheet here. It's just an awesome environment in here, but it is kind of challenging because right now it seems like they're not bringing that many dishes out. So as soon as they bring out a cart full of food, you have to run up and you're not sure exactly what they'll have. I managed to get rice and this is in a lotus leaf. 
and I don't think it's the sticky rice that I normally, the glutinous rice that I normally really like for dim sum, but this is maybe a different version. Um, rice, looks like there's some ham in here and some shrimp and egg. Mm. That's just like fried rice and then maybe re-steamed in the lotus leaf. managed to get one of my lo my guy. These are not exactly the ones I really wanted, but the demand is so high right now that you cannot be too choosy. You gotta just take what comes. But luckily, ah, this is what I wanted in the first place. I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't really want that fried rice in the lotus leaf. What I want is lo my guy, which is glutinous rice in steamed in a lotus leaf, and it's one of my absolute favorites. Oh, 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 oh. That glutinous rice, the lotus leaf is so fragrant. And in here should be maybe a mixture of meat and also maybe some Chinese sausage. Oh, that gooiness. Since I've been a kid, I have always loved to eat dim sum and I went, always used to go to eat dim sum with my parents and my relatives. And this has always been one of my absolute favorite things. Maybe in the entire world. And I'd really like some chili sauce, but it is very challenging to get a hold of anyone to try to get some chili sauce. So I'm gonna take my first bite and then I'll see if I can get some chili sauce. Oh. That sums up comfort food to me completely. The rice is so gooey and it's almost like saucy. But what I love so much about it is how that lotus leaf is like the flavor of that lotus leaf is embedded into that rice, giving it like a little bit of an earthy green taste. This is some kind of feet. And I know it's, I'm pretty sure it's not chicken feet, it's either like duck feet or goose feet because you can see that entire web. And these look like they are very soft and tender and braised for a long time. That's definitely a web. It is it's very soft. It almost has like a, a noodle texture to it because it's so soft. And then it has that very long, slow braised flavor to it. That web. Oh, knuckles. And then you do have to remove all those little foot bones. This is a huge wrap. There's, I think, some. I think it's uh, Napa cabbage, and then there's some sausage in here. There's a mushroom. There's something. I'm not totally sure what's all in here, but that is a huge cabbage wrap. This is going to be really hot. And it's kind of falling apart. Mm. Has a little bit of a ginger taste to it. Oh, and I think this piece is fish cake. I managed to get some shrimp dumplings. I think these are hakao, fresh out of the steamer. I need to go look for some, I need to go look for some chili sauce though. Okay, that was only partially successful. I kind of ran around the restaurant for the last 10 minutes trying to find chili sauce. And I got some kind of red sauce and then I also came away with some mustard. Mustard I do love. I'll go for one of the shrimp hakao. And I'm gonna dip into the mustard. Just filled with shrimp and then just with a, a glutinous wrapper. Now I'll try some of the chili sauce. Put some of this onto the, the rice. spicy and sour. Okay, I've got one final foot to go. I think I like it better than chicken feet because there's more 
there's more skin to this web than a chicken butt. I would call that semi-successful with the dim sum. And then once you're done, you take your check card. And these are all of the dishes that I ordered that she marked down. And then you go up to the front and pay. This place just has so much character. The thing is, it can be a little bit challenging to eat here because you have to really be both patient and aggressive. And sometimes you don't get to eat the different dim sums that you were really hoping to eat because number one, they just don't come out and you might have to sit there for a long time and wait for it. Or number two, you get to the cart and they're already gone. They've just been pounced on. But anyway, how can you not appreciate that exciting atmosphere in there? Today was one of those days that I didn't exactly get to eat all of the dim sum that I wanted to eat, but that's okay. You just cannot beat that classic atmosphere. From here, I was thinking it would be a great idea to go have some brisket noodles next. And they are very, very well known for brisket noodles and brisket curry. And they open at 12.30, it's about 12.15 right now and there is a line of about maybe like a hundred people. I'm not trying to decide right now if I should wait in line. I guess we don't really have anything else to do. We made it inside and we came upstairs. The wait to get in here did not take too long, but luckily they have a bottom floor and then a top floor and then they really pack you in here um, on round tables and just sharing tables. And then I just ordered one of the, the brisket noodles and then also I got a tendon with curry and noodles. It is extremely tight quarters in here and we are all eating family style, but I will do my best to vlog all about it. Uh, we got two different dishes to share, Ying and I. One of them is the brisket noodle noodles, which is one of their classic dishes, and that's what they are very well known for. But then I also got a curry with tendon, and I think it came with some shredded brisket as well, and yeah, I'm about to, to dig into both of them. I'm gonna begin with the, the tendon and the curry, and then there are rice noodles on the bottom here, and also there's pieces of, I think this is brisket as well. Oh, oh, that looks fantastic. Okay, I'll get a little bit of everything in this bite. Mm, yeah, you can smell a little bit of the curry powder and a, like a little bit of a maybe cinnamon aroma to it. Mm. Okay, that is awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's good. Okay, so it's just a little bit spicy. You can taste that curry powder. Um, maybe there is like a star anise in there as well. There's also some kind of an herb taste to it as well. Yeah, that is ridiculously good though. That is awesome. Let me try one of those pieces of tendon. That is a that is a pretty significant nugget of tendon. Yeah. That is good tendon. It has a a gelatinous texture of course, but it's like it's soaked up all of that curry flavor. Let me try to dig down now into those those noodles below there. It has a really nice like herb curry flavor to it as well. The classic brisket noodles now. I just gotta have a piece of that brisket first. Oh wow. That brisket is amazing. It's tender, but it has like a little bit of a a stringy texture to it. You can taste the beef in it, and then it just tastes like here with the green onions, and then yeah, I think that broth is just a very kind of plain soothing broth, but it's all about that brisket. Get going, they told me. Thank you. Let me grab the spoon, and I want to just taste that soup. 
Okay, actually tasting the soup on its own it has a, a very, very rich flavor to it. I think it's beef based. I'm not totally sure, but it does have like a, an umami component to it. It's salty, it's a little bit sweet, and yeah, you can taste that meatiness. I'm gonna try some of this chili sauce. Mm. Oh, chili sauce is good. It's salty and a little bit spicy. It goes great with that beef. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Exit is on the right side. I'm glad we waited in line, and the line didn't take too long. So even if you see a line when you come here, don't be intimidated. It goes pretty fast because they just cram people into the restaurant. I think we were sitting, we were sitting at just a little round table. It couldn't have been like round, more round than my, my arm span. And they put six of us on that table, and then the entire place was just packed. Um, and then people mostly just go in there to slurp down their bowl of noodles and then leave so the line goes fast I think I would go for the actually I liked both of them how they were so different But the curry noodles with that tendon that was the winner for me Since we are in this area, I thought we would stop by a temple next which is just down the road This is the Manmo Temple, and it was built between the years of 1847 and 1862. It is a Taoist temple, and it's just surrounded by sky-rise buildings rising to the sky. And I'm gonna go take a look inside real fast. It's very peaceful and quiet in here. And on the top ceiling there, there are just coils of incense that just continuously burn. It's not a huge temple, uh, but it, on that plaque board behind me, it says that it's a monument because it demonstrates traditional Chinese vernacular architecture, and especially the ceramics and the murals and the architecture of the temple. From here, Ying and I have decided to go back to the metro, and we're gonna head back to the hotel for a little while and try to maybe, maybe rest. We're starting to get sleepy. Maybe it's that food or maybe it's the jet lag. But we're going back to the hotel for a little while and then going out again for dinner tonight. Made it back to Admiralty and all at once I am feeling extremely groggy. I slept for two hours. It was so hard to wake up. But when I got up, the sun is shining. It's pretty clear. So Ying is back at the hotel still resting, but I'm gonna use this opportunity to go to the top of Victoria Peak for the view of Hong Kong. My happiness to go to the top was a little short-lived. I have been met by a line that literally stretches down the highway. There must be thousands of people before me. I'm not sure how long it's gonna take. Um, I was, I would just walk to the top of the hill because I like to hike, but I wanna, I wanna take the funicular, the peak tram for the experience to ride up because it's a real classic funicular. So I'm gonna stand in line, see how fast the line goes. I guess I am not the only one who waited out the rain this morning and waited for sunshine this afternoon. I have decided to ditch the tram. That's gonna take hours to wait in line and I think I can make it up by walking maybe in less than an hour. So I'm on my way hiking. Plus I could use the exercise. Hello. It is incredibly humid in Hong Kong. I'm starting to drip with sweat, but I am very glad I made the decision to walk. I'd much rather be hiking and getting a workout than standing in line waiting for the tram. 
the sign back there said I have a 30 minute walk to the peak. But I'm not so sure I took the most direct route. I was trying to follow the funicular at first, but then it got all confusing in the lanes. But anyway, I'm on the right course now. I made it to the top of the peak. I am just dripping, covered in sweat right now. But I am very glad that I did not wait for the tram, the funicular. That took me exactly 35, in between 35 and 40 minutes to get to the top. I did make a wrong turn, but then I really did kind of huff and puff it all the way to the top. Because I wanted to beat the light, and there's still a little bit of light. It's not quite as clear as it was when I started, but the view is still pretty spectacular. This is one of the most iconic views of Hong Kong from Hong Kong Island on Victoria Peak, and you can see all of downtown Hong Kong Island, as well as the other side, which is Kowloon. Okay, Hi. nice to meet you, Jeffrey. Yeah, nice. And once you're up here at the peak, you can walk around on the edge and just enjoy the amazing, astounding views of Hong Kong. Hong Kong really has one of the greatest skylines in the entire world. That was excellent. It felt great to get some exercise and fantastic views of Hong Kong. And now time to head down before it gets dark. What's so amazing about Hong Kong is that you can actually hike yourself out of the city. After the hike, I went back to the hotel, had a shower, and now we are walking on our way to have dinner. I came to this restaurant and I want to say thank you to Tim for this restaurant recommendation. This is a restaurant that serves all sorts of different dishes. I ordered three different dishes. I went up front there and saw a fish. I think it's a little, a little red snapper possibly. And it looks maybe steamed. So I got one of those and then I also ordered a vegetable dish as well as Hong Kong style eggplant. I'll begin with the fish. And maybe dip that into the sauce. This looks like a fermented bean sauce. Put that onto my rice, or maybe I'll just take a bite out of it. Mm. Well, that sauce is very salty. That needs to be eaten with rice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is the next dish that I ordered. It came in a flaming hot skillet and. What type of vegetable is this? Do you know? Pakaneng, mate? Yeah. <laughs> it's either the vegetable, I think it's the the outer leaves of cabbage. Yeah, that's. I think that's what it is. I'm not totally sure. And then, oh, you can really smell like a fishy kind of aroma to it. I think these are dry shrimp. And there might be some salted fish in here too, and then minced pork. Let me just taste a, a bit of this. Mm. The vegetable is still crisp, but you can taste that seared flavor to it. And I think that is like dry, dry fish or just dry shrimp. But it definitely has a little bit of a fishy taste to it. But that complements it, it makes it salty, and that provides all the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I didn't know I ordered that. I have to say in all honesty that I thought this eggplant dish was going to be like a braised eggplant dish in a, in a pot as well, but it's actually slices of eggplant which are then coated and battered and deep fried. And this is quite a beautiful plate. And then all sorts of crispies on top. There are, looks like chili, dry chilies all mixed in and green onions. I'll go for this guy and maybe black beans. Oh wow, these are like eggplant. Oh, it's very light. Okay, we'll dip into, I think this is just soy sauce, maybe? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. 
it's really, really crispy on the outside. And then really creamy and just fall apart tender on the inside. And as I like sucked in, I could I could taste those chili seeds. They have like fumes, chili fumes coming off of them. Mm, it is a little bit spicy. Those are deep fried eggplant fritters. <laughs> All of those green onions and those chilies and maybe that's garlic on there too. Definitely the winner of the meal is that vegetable dish. It's flavored so nicely with those dried shrimp and on the bottom there are just big huge cloves of garlic which have just been fried in the oil below there and they are barely identifiable as garlic because they're so soft. Oh yeah, like it just melts in your mouth. That was a great dinner, friendly staff and great ambience. It's a it's a Hong Kong busy environment, but it was kind of spacious for Hong Kong at the same time, not too hectic, good food, especially that vegetable dish. That was the winner of the meal. Chang Li Fan Ten. Chang Li Fan Ten. Okay, the restaurant is called Chang Li Fan Ten. And they just gave me their business card. heading back to the hotel. I'm gonna end the vlog for today right now. Thank you all very much for watching today's video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And also make sure you click subscribe for lots more food and travel videos. And also I wanted to mention that this entire video series will be in a playlist, which I will leave in the link in the description box below. So if you haven't seen all the videos, be sure to check them out. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.